Okay, now that we did a good comparison of uh, range finding reticles versus lasers, there's other ranging techniques that you're going to want to be aware of. Uh, GPS, maps, and aerial photography are also going to be a way that you're going to probably use under certain circumstances. Uh, let's look at GPS. This is something I use all the time. This is an excellent way to go for your zero confirmation. Most GPS units can get within plus or minus three meters uh, if you've got good satellite contact. So uh, this is a really good way to go if you want to absolutely determine your range to the target when you're making those zero confirmations to confirm that your charts are not crazy. Uh, you're going to want to make really, really sure that uh, you've you got the right distance to the target. And this also works well in the field when the exact coordinates of the kill zone are known. And uh, if your mission planning provides you that information uh, before you go out in your area of operations, then uh, that'll work really good. GPS is one way that works good. Now, a lot of times uh, maps are also used. Uh, and they're used in conjunction with GPS. But if you're familiar with the MGRS, the Military Grid Reference System, you can utilize your 1 to 50,000 scale military maps and uh, nail down the 8-digit grid coordinates to your target with pretty good precision. And that's going to get you within 10 meters of your target, assuming that it's in an area that is clearly distinguishable on the map. If your target is standing someplace that's drawn out clearly on the map, this should be pretty good. Most of these uh, MGRS maps are real precise. If you have access to them and you know how to use them, uh, then go ahead and use that. If you're using a six-figure grid reference system, you're only going to be within 100 meters. So pay close attention to your danger space so that you know how close you need to get with your uh, grid reference. An eight-digit grid reference is going to get you within 10 meters, and a 10-digit is going to get within one meter. So. And also your uh, map reading skills are going to come in handy there. Note that, you know, this is going to typically be done in conjunction with aerial photography, okay? So when you're looking at maps, you're also going to be comparing those with photos from the air during the mission planning phase. And uh, this is something that's a little bit more complicated, requires kind of some desk work. And this is something that you can't really do on the fly in the field. This is going to be a mission planning type deal. When Carlos Hathcock made his famous kill on the Vietnamese general that you may have read about, that's kind of what he did in the mission planning phase as they went over the aerial photography combined with the maps to get a, a good uh, firing position located. And he did uh, kind of uh, modify that a little bit on the fly. But uh, nonetheless, maps are an effective tool when uh, used properly. Um, aerial photography is going to be, be very important to use in conjunction with maps because maps are only going to show you certain detail. And your vegetation and things like that where the fields are plowed, where new trails might be or might not be, um, that's going to vary from year to year. And those maps do go out of date. The maps don't always represent exactly what's going on. And they don't show all your color gradients that you're going to visually see. So your aerial photography is going to be very, very essential for pinning down the exact location of the target area so that you can uh, sync that up with the map and get a real good determination of where that exact target kill zone is on the map. So be sure to use aerial photography if you're using maps to kind of supplement so you know what's going on in real life. And the final method we're going to discuss for range determination is the most effective method, but it is the most cumbersome. And that's uh, your triangulation methods. When we're talking about scaled reticles, like your mil dot reticles, your mil scale reticles, your minute of angle reticles, those are also triangulation methods, but they're not near as precise as this one. Now, what you're going to need to do this is a theodolite. A theodolite is a, basically, it's just a precision instrument for measuring angles in the horizontal and vertical planes. And they're used mostly for surveying applications, but they're used also for different specialized fields as well. Um, your modern theodolites are going to consist of a movable telescope mounted within two perpendicular axes, the horizontal or trunnion axes, and the vertical axes. And when you point the telescope at the target, the, the angle of each of these axes is going to be measured with really, really close precision, uh, typically within seconds of arc. So um, that's going to give you a pretty good good range. Um, 
Now the advantages of, of using a theodolite in the field is that this is going to give you very, very precise ranges to your target. Uh, every bit as accurate as a laser range finder if set up properly. And this is totally passive. There's no emitting light from this. And uh, this is the recommended means of range determination for high value hard target interdiction applications where the enemy is going to be kind of at a heightened state of security, employing every technology available towards warding off all potential party poopers. Okay? So um, there are some limitations. Um, these things are incredibly cumbersome. They're heavy, they're big, they're goofy to carry. Uh, they're kind of expensive. I mean, they're going to cost a few thousand dollars for a used one. If you can find, you're going to want to use the old mechanical field lights. You're not going to want to use the new digital ones. Um, there are some military ones you can probably find, but um, you're going to have to use kind of the old world ones. Some of them are made by Leica. Some of them are made by Zeiss. Uh, there's different uh, outfits out there. And they're going to take quite a bit of time to set up and operate. Um, they're going to require a slightly more sophisticated level of trigonometry to operate it effectively and uh, you're going to you're going to have to use a lot of practice to get these set up. Um, you're going to set up a large base on your triangle, you're going to have to have cord out there. You're going to need to get a, a 30 two readings uh, 30 m meters apart, you know, or maybe even 40 meters apart plus to establish a wide base on your triangle. But um you know honestly, if you need to use a theodolite for one of your uh, ops then I I don't need to tell you anymore because basically you're going to know everything already so uh, in summary when we look at all these different range finding uh, methods uh, the short of it you know short of being a scud hunter for all practical purposes you're going to want to have the following pieces of equipment at your disposal number one you're going to have your rifle scope with the first focal plane scaled reticle of some kind uh, either mill based or um, minute of angle based number two you're going to have uh, probably a mill dot master or some kind of other equivalent analog ranging device. Or if you don't have one of those, uh, a, re a regular pocket calculator is uh, also going to be needed for other things anyways. Or a pencil and paper and your brain uh, is a good way to go. That never goes out, hopefully. Although your brain can go out under stress, so it is nice to have the calculator sometimes too. Um, but it's not good to rely on electronics, okay? So analog is always a good way to go. Mill dot master is a great way to go, and we'll show you in a, another a tutorial exactly how to use that. And the next thing that you're going to probably want to have is I would recommend having a laser range finder with an effective max range exceeding your cartridge uh, and your load's maximum effective range in less than ideal conditions. I would actually double it. So if you're using a 308, and uh, you only plan to shoot at a thousand meters. I would I would try to look for a two thousand meter range finder just to cover your bases because it's never going to work uh, the same as you're going to expect it to work. Uh, now, if you're going to be shopping for a laser for a 408 Shytac, you're going to have to go with a pretty high end unit. Uh, like I said before, the Vectronix Terrapin is kind of the the way to go for most of those applications, and the final thing you're going to want to have probably is a really good spotting scope with the ranging reticle. And that's going to be an excellent tool to have. You don't have to have a spotting scope with the ranging reticle, but especially if you have a spotter helping you out, uh, this tool is going to be really good to have uh, for multiple reasons we'll get into when we're actually uh, showing you how to do all this stuff in a little while here. But when you're talking about correcting rifle fire, uh, a ranging reticle in a spotter is going to be very, very much worth its weight in gold for you. So, and I'll get into another video showing different uh, options you have with your spotting scopes. The one I like to use, the Optolith uh, with the 30 power eyepiece from IOR. It has a scaled uh, a mill reticle in it that you can use for correcting fire for... Uh, ranging and such so that's going to be very helpful but uh, we'll get into more of these equipment options here after a little bit but uh, to make a long story short have those basic pieces of equipment and know how to use them and we will get out in the field and continue to give you more examples of how to employ all this technology effectively stay tuned <laughs>